How about uh, John Duncan asks? How about shared servers? Can be sold? Can it be sold to individual clients? So John, um, not not quite sure what you what you mean about how about shared servers. In terms of how you sell from us, we we work with you to get a certain commitment in our cloud, and then what you do is you you slice and dice that in, in a way that makes the most sense for you to sell through to your customers. So everything's based on a backup account, and you might sell one backup account to per business. You might end up selling a, a given client of yours many backup accounts to. If they've got ten PCs, you might actually decide with the customer that they need ten different accounts for ten PCs. Um, all right, open. Uh, Alan Lift asks, do we support open files on two thousand servers? Alan, I believe so. Certainly, we support open file backup, and we support Windows two thousand. So uh, I don't see any reason why we would not. Um, it's a it's a VSS volume shadow services compatible open file backup system that we've built, and again, that's just built into the software. There are no additional extras for the open file backup module. Uh, Matthew Wagner asks, do you have any storage caps in regards to bandwidth throughput? Uh, absolutely not. This is actually a, a, a big strong point of our technology and a major selling point is our speed. So like I was saying earlier, the 15 megabits is not atypical on upload with all of our competitors throttle and cap and I, we just don't understand that as a company. Um, for, your, for your SMB customers who've got Fios connections or other large bandwidth connections, they can upload at full speed. Uh, Mark Diemen asks, is the vulnerability scanner freely available on your website? Yes, Mark, it is, but it's branded to SOS. So one of the things we would do uh, as a partner is actually get you a branded version of that vulnerability scanner so you can use it with your customers, really help with that brand building, help with that customer awareness among your customers that you've now got this new managed service offering of online backup. Uh, okay. Okay, so Matthew Bugner asks, what about backing up Exchange as well as archived ver via Outlook? So with Exchange, we've got a couple of options, Matthew. Uh, Lynn? Yeah, okay, so this is, I'm not very technical, is, uh, so Ken is surprised, but uh, this I come across all, obviously all the time, and uh, in the SMB world, Exchange is very important. We believe we have the best solution for exchange uh, because it comes with a commitment to make it work, to make sure it's recoverable, both of which are not universally available out there. So our solution is indeed both uh, technology via our own plugin, but we are humble people here. The point is that we're going to put a human resource behind it to make sure that your solution per exchange client actually works. Um, this is the only way we've seen uh, success in this space. We have tons of partners who've partnered with other people who had no problems backing up their exchange, but severe problems getting it back. Um, so this is very standard for us. It is important, however, in your discussions with salespeople to make it very clear if you indeed need exchange uh, backup. Uh, we do not assume everybody does. In fact, I hear all day long, I'm moving my clients away from exchange. So uh, please make that uh, aware so that we can make sure when we give you pricing, it is inclusive of exchange and or you know, other complex environments. Yeah, that, that's a really important point. So um, with, with typical, um, so with complex environments, Exchange Server, SQL Server, etc. What we've found is our partners really have struggled with our technology and the technology of our competitors. It's, it's, it, there is such diversity in the array of um, both just versions and combinations of Exchange. So, you know, for those very technical people on the line, Exchange 2K7 running on Windows 2008, that's a particularly thorny combination. 2K7 on 2K3, it's not. So um, what, what we created was our Blue Sky Complex Environment Support. So what this is, it's a special service for our partners where we work with you to figure out how many of your customers have what we would call a complex environment. So that may be as simple as saying, how many of your clients have an exchange server? And then what we do is we actually give you a license to our, compl our complex environment support to plan, basically. Think of it as, you could nearly think of it as like uh, a license to a plugin, but it's not. The benefit of it is you get access to our Exchange Backup Toolkit or our SQL Server Backup Toolkit. And that, frankly, is got, we've got access to millions of dollars of software and technology licenses that we put, we make available in that toolkit for our partners. So sometimes that will involve using the SOS Exchange Backup application. We've got our own Exchange Backup module. 
Um, but sometimes we'll actually work with you to determine that that's not the best solution, and we might source something, SOS might source something from Microsoft or IBM that's already in our toolkit. We're partners with a lot of technology companies to bring that to you at no additional cost. So that's a really important point, is if you subscribe to the complex environment support option for one of your customers, in some cases we're bringing thousands of dollars worth of product and technology to bear for your client at no cost to you, the partner, but you might in fact then sell that to the client for $1,000 or so. So it's a very powerful um, solution and actually a way for you to build additional revenue. Okay. Maynard uh, Van Gen, I probably mispronounced that. Do you have partners in South Africa? Yes. And do you have storage locations in South Africa? No. Um, not yet. Not yet, yep. Uh, John Stewart, can you back up Novell servers? John, not natively, but through the Blue Sky Complex Environment Support, we can. Um, so again, your CES is a powerful option because our technicians work for you. They don't talk to your customers unless you want them to, but they work for you to actually deploy a custom solution. So they've got they've got best practices and patents and technology that allows them to support a very wide array of technology from, um, from Oracle through yeah, Novell, uh, obviously all the Microsoft technologies. Okay. Steve Brown asks, I know that medical officers, um, oh, this is the, the, sorry, this is the same question yeah. as before. So, Steve, so your question is really, if a company is using a completely cloud-based application infrastructure, is there an opportunity for online backup? Yes, okay. there is, because even if you've got a medical practice, um, say 10 doctors and 20 employees who are using a completely cloud-based solution for billing or for customer records, they still have a lot of data locally on site. So uh, another thing is, uh, oftentimes your clients will have other solutions in place that they're not looking to replace. We will show you, talk with you, coach you through how this could be an incremental opportunity for you, not a replacement one. Uh, but most certainly, there's always some data that is not being backed up with their current solution. So th that's part of part of what we do is not just go in and say replace what you got. Uh, your local solution isn't good. Uh, it, it's to enhance and take care of the DR needs that are not being met. Uh, sometimes that's a replacement issue, but sometimes it's augmenting what they're doing. Right. Um. Okay, so Greg Garrison asks, is data compressed on the client? Greg, uh, yes, the data is compressed on on the local PC client and then again on the server, but you probably don't care about that. So in terms of this question usually comes up in the context of how much data are we shipping over the network. Um, across the board, we compress the data to a roughly half its size for the initial backup. And the daily backup is a binary, it uses binary delta compression, so it's only the binary that has changed. So daily incrementals hardly use any bandwidth footprint, a tiny amount of data that gets transferred. It's the initial backup where this really becomes an issue. Um, and what you can do is, because we've got no throttling, it becomes just a bandwidth calculation, right? Um, the time taken to upload a gigabyte of data, you can factor roughly a 50% compression ratio. So that would be about 500 megs of data to transfer. Then your transfer speed is going to be just dictated by your up upload. If you've got a 15 megabit connection, it's going to take seconds. If you've got a 128-bit DSL uplink, that's going to be potentially an hour or hours. So it's really a function of the upstream bandwidth you've got at the site in question. Uh, I'm noticing some questions regarding map drives, uh, backing up data that resides in NAS, or frankly wanting to back up to a NAS. Uh, both are absolutely possible. Yeah. So, and, and that's backing up from that mapped drives is just natively built into the software. So that's very that's very simple to do. Um, got another question here. Does the SOS technology include a local backup component to allow rapid restore? Absolutely. That's a key part of the product offering that we've got, and something that our competitors do not have. So somebody mentioned Intronus before. Intronus does not include local backup, and they've got this huge problem with their upload speed and all other limitations compared to us, but um, we can say that about nearly any of our competitors, that we believe in, in attempting to create a comprehensive disaster recovery solution for your clients, they need local backup. There is a place for local backup, as you say, for rapid restore, not just for rapid restore. There's, uh, local backup is, is useful for all sorts of data that is 
it's not necessary to push to the cloud. Um, so we don't recommend, frankly, that all data goes to the cloud. Now, in terms of what you recommend to your clients, you may well decide that that's the best solution, in which case you would recommend that and you would get them to do that. And obviously, there's more revenue associated with the more data you can sell through to your customers. So that then becomes a judgment call. Thomas Dillon. Thomas Dillon. We can't allocate the upload bandwidth to not choke their connection. You can, Thomas. So there's three different upload connection settings within the software that you can pick. I've forgotten what they are, but it's you know, small, medium, and large, so to speak. Um, so that does, in fact, throttle the amount of the available connection that uh, the SOS technology uses. If you put it on the, it's core, it's, I think it's DSL cable and corporate connection, I think, are the three options. If you put it on the highest connection, it's going to just use as much as it possibly can. But that said, it is designed for business to continue as usual. SOS is passive, you know, both on resources it takes locally while backups are running, as well as, uh, you know, uploading. So if there's a lot of action and you need the bandwidth to do something else, yes, it's going to allow you to do that. Okay, so we've got um, running out of questions. The last one. Okay, with local backup in place, can we take only critical data to the cloud? Certainly, you've got that option, Maynard. So you can you can deploy it so that you you know eighty percent of the backup is going locally, and you can deploy it so that eighty percent of the backup is going to the cloud. That's you know that's really there at your discretion. Okay, all right. So uh, and then Scott Mellon asks, is the backup exchange aware? I will the backup clear exchange transaction logs when a backup is run regarding the open files on Windows 2000 server. Windows 2000 does not have VSS. Okay, Scott, so thank you for that information about Windows 2000. Um, I hope somebody contact you about that. I, I just I don't know the answer about VSS and on Win 2K. And with Exchange, it depends which solution we put in place. Our application does do, it is our app, Exchange backup app, which is a separate app to the, to the core online backup app, is Exchange aware. But depending upon your environment, we, we may bring in technology we've got access to. That might be Microsoft DPM, the Data Protection Manager, which is certainly um, very exchange aware. It's from Microsoft. Uh, we may bring some IBM technology into play. We've got other technology partnerships. So depending upon your needs, that Blue Sky complex environment support I talked about, it's a very flexible professional services offering, which can source the right technology for your partners. Generally, what we find is that um, Partners, so customers, a partner's got 50 customers. You might have 15 that have Exchange, four of which have got thorny, complex environments that they need our complex environment support on. Um, so that's uh, the iPad info again. Um, to be in the running for that iPad, call into uh, the sales to the sales office here, talk to a partner specialist, quote the iPad promotion code from the webinar, IPADJ24. IPADJ24, and we'll be um, we'll be raffling that between now or during the weekend and announce it on Monday. And you will get an email uh, so that you know you're registered. So if you talk to a salesperson, they're going to email you. Yes, you're registered for the iPad. So great. And um, we've got just a brief poll here just to gauge people's interest in the content and uh, and where they're at. For if you could just take a moment to fill that in, it'd be greatly appreciated. And Otherwise, um, really want to thank everybody for your interactivity. We've had uh, great participation throughout the session and um, really love your feedback. So if, for those of you who have attended these before, if you thought it worked better today with the Q&A throughout, love to hear your comments. If there are those of you who thought we did a bad job,